Welcome back to another Tips and Tricks Thursday. My name is Derek, and today I want to talk about micro soldering. Now, this is a topic that I've been covering a lot of recently, and then one of the most common things that I hear is, "What do I need to get started, or what do I need to get to really dive deep into this to make it kind of a staple part of the business?" Whether you're just starting out and you're looking to do something like a charge port on an iPad, all you really need at that point is a soldering iron, along with the flux, the wick, the solder, because that is a repair that you can do by eye. You'd have to have decent vision, of course, or some way to magnify it, but you don't need to go as far as using a microscope. Apart from that, there's only a handful of other repairs that you can really do properly by eye, like for example, an ear speaker on an iPhone. They're really simple to replace. The ones that are attached to the proximity sensor, super simple to replace and can be done by eye and with a soldering iron. And there are a handful of other small things like that, but as soon as you start to get into the other areas of repair, you really need to invest in good equipment, especially if you're going to start working on logic boards and if you're wanting to get into a very lucrative side of the business, which is data recovery. I say lucrative because not a lot of people can do it. The demand is high though, because for the most part, when it comes to the phone itself, the value for a lot of people isn't the phone, it's what's in it. The memories, the photos, the messages, the voicemails, whatever it might be that's inside the phone, they want to get at and they're willing to pay for it. So if you have the skills to be able to do it, they will pay. Some of the really successful people at data recovery can charge because of how reliable they are well over $500, if not $1,000 for data recovery or something between there. Now, of course, working on devices for the intention of data recovery, you have to actually be able to do it Otherwise, you're basically going to cause people to lose out on that when they could have sent it to somebody else. So this is something that takes a lot of practice to be able to do. But once you get there, one of the nice things about these types of repairs is they're almost all labor cost. There's not a whole lot of parts that go into it. Of course, you have to invest up front in the tools, which we'll get to in a second, um, and, and, possibly, and quite possibly devices that you can use for either donor parts or as donor boards for things like a CPU swap. So to list off a few things that you will need for sure if you're going to get into that area of micro soldering or anything more complicated than a charge port or an ear speaker is for sure a way to magnify whatever you're working on. A microscope is a really good start. A rework station, definitely, because you're going to be doing a lot with hot air. You need to be able to get the components that you are trying to remove off hot enough without messing with the surrounding components. So having a really good rework station with the proper nozzle, with the right temperature, at the right airflow, is something that kind of comes with time and research and experience, but you need a decent rework station. You will also want to have a power supply because you're going to be able to do a lot with a power supply. You'll be able to inject voltage into a motherboard to help isolate either a short or determine what type of power draw it has so that you can find out whether or not you have an issue with a primary rail or a secondary rail or an issue with a specific IC or, I mean, and just, and just having a power supply allows you to quickly check and see if the work you're doing is actually working as you're able to troubleshoot and fix these issues. You definitely will need a multimeter. You need something that can be able to check the continuity between components that you, so you can test the resistance, so you can test the voltage. So having a, dis, a decent multimeter is required for any type of micro soldering beyond the basics. It'll help you isolate the lines that are shorted, which will help you then use your power supply to inject voltage using different methods like using a thermal camera, a free spray, things like that to be able to isolate the problematic areas and using schematics with board view software to be able to determine which components are failing 
And that is a whole nother world that I've touched on in previous videos and we can get more in. Now, if there is something specific that you'd like to see in a video, let me know in the comments below. So beyond that, using having something like a thermal camera, very useful and having the proper tools, whether it's the brushes, blades, spatulas, all the different types of tools to be able to help remove underfill, get under chips, knowing which type of flux to use, which type of solder to use, because there's a bunch of different types of solder and there's a bunch of different types of soldering temperatures and pastes. You have lower melting, mid melting and high melting solder that are composed of different alloys. And you also have those that are, for example, leaded and non-leaded, some that come with flux without flux. There's a whole world of knowing which ones to use depending on the part that you're working on. For example, if it's a component that's going to see action, you're going to want to use a higher melting solder, for example, a connector, something that's going to actually see movement, motion, motion where you're not, it has to be strong. So you have to use at least a mid temperature range. You can't really go lower than that. I mean, you can kind of get away with it, but you really don't want to. But going to like a smaller IC that that isn't going to see a whole lot of uh, of temperature uh, temperature changes. You can go with a lower melting solder, so that it's easier to install. And because it's such a small thing, you really want to get it on there quickly. And so using a lower melting, like a 138 solder paste, is good for that. Along with all of the different components, the capacitors, the coils, the resistors, using a low melt solder on those is something that I recommend because it means less heat needs to go to the board. So having a microscope with cameras, the computer, the thermal camera, power supply, that is kind of just the beginning of the basics that you need for more advanced soldering. But that's a good place to start if this is something that you're looking to get into. Now down the line, there are other devices that will help you really diagnose those 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 issues that don't pop up as often, but are the ones that trip up people that are getting into this, where you can use oscilloscope to help understand what's going on. And depending on the devices that you're using, there are tools out there that help you troubleshoot much quicker. For example, there's a digital multimeter that I've shown where it's a, it's a connector that will actually read all of the pins on specific models of iPhone, where you connect a connector and you hit test, and using that paired with JC Drawing, the, the, the schematic software, well, it'll actually list out all of the readouts from all of the pins, and it'll help you isolate the ones that are out of out of spec or have either or open line when they're not supposed to be or are shorted out. Now, obviously, that's not every single model, and that would be really cool if we had that for every single model of iPhone and Samsung and all, all that, but it's kind of one of those things that it does help to have access to those tools or at least knowledge of them so that when you run into issues you can it can be easier for you to get to the solution than having to manually go and test every single pin on every single connector when you're really lost as to where you need to go now the other thing that you need to invest in is research understanding where to gain the knowledge and the nice thing about YouTube for example is you have people that are willing to put out there the knowledge that they've gained, which means you have to spend time watching people do this type of work and see kind of their thought process on where they start. They start by trying to put power into the board, see what happens. And from there, you'll be able to determine which direction to go because what what, it, what you'll find is you start here and it can split off and go here and then that can split off and then that can split off and it can go in several different directions. So understanding, okay, I need to check the battery line. I need to check the main line. I need to check the boost line. I need to check whatever line you're starting to isolate. You'll be able to find, okay, it's it, the issue is on, I'm, I'm getting an issue with VDD main, for example, on this iPhone. But when I put power to VDD main, this IC lights up. Okay, maybe it's not this IC. Let's check the surrounding lines that are secondary lines that connect through that IC. So be able to isolate these components and see, okay, I've got an issue here. It's not on the main, but it's on a secondary line connected to it. So instead of just pulling off that IC, just hoping that it's just the IC that's heating up and having an issue and 
and wasting your time by putting another one back and having the same result, you'll be able to learn, okay, I need to troubleshoot beyond this. Now, I know that, that I've kind of gone in a bunch of directions with this, and that's because there is so many directions that you can go with this. And that's what's great about it. There's a reason why the percentage of, of techs in the entire industry don't really go into it is because it gets really complicated and you actually have to put in the time, put in the effort, put in the, the investment into the tools that you're using and into yourself. And there's nothing wrong with just doing screen replacements and battery replacements and charge port replacements and helping people understand how to use their phone and swapping out a camera and learning how to micro solder on the charge ports and the ear speakers. Like that is completely fine. And if that's all you want to do, keep going with it. But if you're looking to get into where I think the industry is going to continue to go, which is the areas of, A, we're going to make it so that everything is serialized. So the only way to be able to fix it is by doing some type of solder work, having these skills to be able to do it on those things, as well as help people recover data and remember and recover those memories from devices that they don't really care about the device. They just want the memory. So understanding how to get to the memory quicker and quickly and safely and not lose their data, it's extremely rewarding, so much more rewarding to be able to recover, to be able to recover a dead device than it is to just fix the cracked screen. That's my opinion. Let me know in the comments below if there's something you'd like to see in a future video or if you have thoughts or something to add to what I've said, leave it down below as well. Thanks a ton for watching and we'll see you tomorrow for a Phone Fix Friday.